I'm Ron Polk and I'm down here loading the Smart Wood Shop. I had a question about the hose reel for the air and for the power and so I thought I'd take a break and tell you and show you exactly how it works. Now this is a system that I developed multiple trucks and trailers ago with very inexpensive plastic hose reels that you can get at any hardware store. If I can, these happen to be Ames, and if I can find a link to them, I will put them in my Amazon store. And that's a new thing. If uh, you can click on the link right here in the video, and my wife has put the store together. And what's cool about it is it's on Amazon. And if you happen to already buy from Amazon, if you click on the link and go there and buy something through that, they give me a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit, and they don't charge you any extra. Now, don't buy it if it's more expensive. Shop around. Sometimes on Amazon, prices change. But if my price is the same, uh, it won't cost you any extra, and it'll help support the channel. And as a side note, uh, when we were putting the um, Flexzilla air hose and cord up, this cord is fantastic. It's a 10 3 100 footer, nice green color, my favorite cord, and I got it about $10 cheaper than my previous favorite, which was the Yellow Jacket. And I got it for $149. Well, right now, at my store, the, the link we have there, it's actually below $100. I think it was $98 or $94 or something like that. If I needed another one, I'd get it, but I only need one. But I could, if I, if I would have waited a week and a half, I could have saved a third of the price. So check out it if you are interested in a long, heavy-duty cord. So the way these work is I just roll them up on the, after I mounted the, the uh, two reels, and these are identical, the one for the air and the one for the uh, electric are the same. Uh, I just, I just, I had them stretched out in the shop, uh, laid out for a few days to get nice and straight, and then I just, when I got these mounted, I just rolled them in. And then what I do is I, I stick on the, on the, um, I put them in, of course, in the orientation that I want. So the last thing to go on for the air is the uh, side that I'm going to plug in my cords or my hoses to, and the electrical, the um, and that I plug into is the last to go on. So what I do is I create a little pigtail and it um, And I zip tie it right on so it hangs out about six inches and that way when I'm when it's unhooked And I'm rolling it up whether it's the electric or the air that little pigtail is there And it doesn't get in my way and it stays put with the zip tie and it's just zip tied right onto one of the spokes of the uh, of the wheel and uh, this particular, I, this is my, uh, you know, there's a lot of variety of these plastic hose reels. This one is my favorite. It's got a little guide, you know, that it rolls um, both the air and, and then I've, I've routed the air through this top one and through the electrical one. So it guides it. And then I've drilled about a two and a half inch hole in the floor, just big enough to get the fittings through. And I've always just rounded those over on the inside and the outside. I haven't rounded it over yet. Um, but one of my subscribers um, showed me a little um, screw-on uh, bracket that has rollers on all four sides. And they're only 10 bucks on Amazon. I don't think they're in my store, but if I remember, I'll put it, I'll put it over there. I haven't ordered them yet, but I think I'm going to get two of those, put one on the top, on the inside and one on the bottom matching up so I have rollers so when I pull these out I won't be doing any abrasion. I haven't had much abrasion with just a round over but again I think I'm going to get two of those and do that. And then all I do is just drop them through and then just through till they're out the bottom of the trailer and then I just grab both of them at the same time and I walk them out onto the job and then I take the electric and plug it into the best power source available and I've never needed more than 100 feet. But, but 50, I probably would have been a little tight sometimes. And I try to get as close to the um, breaker panel as possible. And, you know, if there's an outlet in the garage right by it, I'll grab one of those. Occasionally, they're GFI. I did not GFI this trailer. I've done it 
every time in the past it's kind of a code thing but I'm gonna buy one of those pigtails that's a GFI so when I'm not plugged into a GFI on the job I'll plug it into there and then into whatever the power source is and that'll give me the ability not to be into two GFIs which I've run into uh, probably 25% of the time where the the best plug available is a GFI plug garage plugs are GFI usually and so you get a little bit you can have a little bit of a problem uh, running you know GFI to GFI so that way I'll have the ability to to do either or and once I find one of those pigtails I'll, I'll let you know and show it to you um, and then the last thing on the hole in the floor I just take a uh, piece of quarter inch plywood larger than the hole and then I just put a screw in one corner and it just rotates out so when the cords are rolled up and I'm traveling down the road I just rotate that over there's many things you can do I've seen guys uh, take some pipe fittings and screw them in the holes and then have a cap there's all kind of things you can do but I've always just used a piece of scrap plywood and it uh, and you know half the time I don't even think about closing it I, I've never really had an issue of any water or any kind of road debris getting in through that little hole so not a big issue I suppose if you were in the area with um, rodents or things you you know it may help keep rodents out but uh, that's it it's it's that simple and the beauty of it is that I'm not dealing with uh, those uh, retractable air hoses that you have to kind of connect they um, they're expensive because you want to get a good one they make cheap ones and I've had an inexpensive one and it just it was a hassle and I've had good ones and again I you know it, it's nice that it rolls in for you but they're expensive they're bigger and uh, this just works and you know keep it simple this is simple there's no mechanical stuff uh, there's no um, you know air fittings that you have to make sure that they stay tight all I have is a standard you know end on it that I just plug my hose on every time now there's one other thing I forgot to mention I have a pigtail that is plugged into my compressor and I've used a couple of zip ties those electrical kind with the holes in them that you can put a screw through and I just have a couple of those up the wall so it's plugged into the compressor and it hangs here and it's right near where that pigtail is so as soon as I get the amount of uh, air hose out I want then I plug it in and then the same thing with the electrical when I wired it my starting point my starting box had it's a it's a two gang it has two outlets the compressor is the only thing plugged into it so I have three open outlets if I need them and uh, then I just took an extension cord a uh, good quality uh, extension cord and I clipped off one end and wired it in I was unable to find anything in the store any cheaper than doing that and I'll just uh, take that extension cord it was an older one and I'm gonna I like 25 footers but I tend to buy 50s. The 25s tend to be about the same price, and I got a good deal on 50s. So, but I do like 25s. So I'm going to take that one and make uh, almost two 25s out of it. It'll be short by about four feet. One of them will be. So that's the setup. It's pretty simple. It's inexpensive, and I can spend my money on good quality um, air hose and good quality electric cord instead of on you know big expensive. And and if you think air hose uh, reels are expensive for good ones try try pricing one of the electrical ones that you hardwire uh, I looked into those I was unable to find anything bigger than 50 uh, with the gauge that I needed and and it was very expensive and then again they're bulky and you're dealing with them get this this is just simple cheap and it works and I and, it, and I never even think about it I just roll it in and then just pull it out pull them out together and I have air and power on any situation and a lot of people ask about jobs without power it's just not something that I run into in almost 30 years of construction I have only worked on one job site with no power and I borrowed a big diesel generator for that one but in all my years that's been the only one I know certain parts of the country uh, they get you know the contractors in long before the power is in but we just don't do it here one of the first things we do is we put a temp power meter in and so we have power from day one on a job if you like following along with smart then be sure to subscribe and click on that bell so you know when I put up a video 
And also, if you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Give me some kind of interaction. Let me know what you think. You can give a comment too. That'd be fantastic. And if you want a set of the awesome rolling toolbox plans, the predecessor to Smart, you can click on the link right here in the video. At the same place, you can find the workbench plans, the stand-up desk, and the crosscut jig. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.